Hey guys, welcome back to Med Which Made Simple. In this video, we're gonna see about heart diseases in pregnancy. Let's begin. Okay, the most common heart diseases which complicate pregnancy are mainly two, which includes congenital heart diseases, which are present right from birth, and rheumatic heart disease, which basically occurs following improperly or inadequately treated beta hemolytic streptococci bacteria infection okay, what are the symptoms of heart disease in pregnancy this basically includes dyspnea orthopnea palpitations and chest pain what are the signs which you see in heart disease in pregnancy this basically includes cyanosis Clubbing, thrill, murmurs, and arrhythmias. Sinuses and clubbing are basically seen on physical examination. Thrill and murmurs are basically heard on auscultation. And arrhythmias are basically found out by doing ECG. In pregnancy, there are various changes which occur in the pregnant women due to various hormonal factors and these are physiological so the same occurs in cardiovascular system there will be increase in various cardiovascular factors such as cardiac output stroke volume and heart rate meanwhile there there will also be decrease in peripheral vascular resistance and as, as you all know, decrease in peripheral vascular resistance will lead to decrease in blood pressure. So it is easy to remember, in pregnancy, there is increase in cardiac output, stroke volume and heart rate, whereas there is decrease in blood pressure. Okay, so basically, your normal heart, a normally functioning heart without any defect can actually manage such an increase in workload such as increase in cardiac output increase in stroke volume and increase in heart rate it, it will be able to accommodate to the various changes which occur in the pregnant women whereas a heart with any disease such as any congenital heart defect or rheumatic heart disease will be facing difficulties to manage such changes so there's something known as new york heart association or NYHA classification of severity of heart diseases okay so basically they classify the severity from class 1 to class 4 class 1 includes the patients who have no limitation of their daily day-to-day -day activity so basically they'll be having some mild or no cardiovascular diseases however there are exceptions to this case also so this starts from class 1 and it goes till class 4. Class 4 basically includes patients with severe limitation in doing their physical activities and they also have dyspnea at rest. So this basically indicates that the patient is having some severe underlying pathology, severe cardiovascular pathology and they'll be having breathlessness even at rest without doing any activity okay so NYHA classification of severity of cardiovascular disease starts from class 1 to class 4 based on the severity of the disease okay so now let's discuss about rheumatic heart disease so rheumatic heart disease is basically a disease which occurs following improperly or inadequately treated bacterial infection caused by beta hemolytic streptococci so this commonly affects the valves of the heart so it includes the valve diseases the most commonly affected valve is the mitral or bicuspid valve which leads to something known as mitral stenosis and it occurs in about 80 percent of the cases of rheumatic heart disease this mitral stenosis basically involves narrowing of the mitral valve giving it the classical fish mouth appearance 
what happens after that is there will be development of increased blood pressure in the pulmonary circulation leading to pulmonary hypertension and then there will be development of pulmonary edema in severe cases okay how this happens narrowing of mitral valve will lead to accumulation of blood inside the left atrium this leads to increase in the pressure in the left atrium increase in pressure in the left atrium will also increase the pressure in the pulmonary veins which open into the left atrium leading to pulmonary hypertension pulmonary hypertension will increase the um, hydrostatic pressure in the pulmonary circulation leading to pulmonary edema in severe cases even atrial fibrillation or AFib can occur which is associated with increased mortality now how do you manage rheumatic heart disease the most preferred modality of management is surgery but it will be best if it is done before the pregnancy if something has to be done during pregnancy for the first time a technique known as balloon valvuloplasty is preferred in this technique basically we will be using a balloon as a stent to dilate the narrowed or stenosed mitral valve so this basically prevents the accumulation of blood inside the left atrium and it helps in maintaining the patency of the mitral valve and will advise the patient to follow some lifestyle changes such as limited physical activity because increased physical activity basically increases the workload of the heart so basically the heart is already damaged in congenital heart disease and rheumatic heart disease so increased physical activity will increase the workload of the heart and the increased workload of the heart will further damage the heart so the patient should be advised to do limited physical activity and salt restriction in the diet should be advised and diuretics can be prescribed if required so this basically deals with the edema part okay edema or this basically helps in reducing symptoms such as pulmonary edema okay and also helps in hypertension now let's see about congenital heart diseases congenital heart diseases are diseases which occur right from birth okay the common congenital heart diseases are the following atrial septal defects which also known as ASD ventricular septal defects which are also known as VSD and patent ductus arteriosus which is also known as PDA these diseases are not associated with that much risk during pregnancy so even if they are treated or not properly treated these conditions are not associated with that much risk during pregnancy okay so it's better to treat these cases before pregnancies to avoid any complications during pregnancy however okay now let's see about tetralogy of phthalate which is another congenital heart disease and we'll discuss um, the tetralogy of phthalate in detail in our upcoming video in this video we're not discussing the tetralogy of phthalate in detail so basically tetralogy of phthalate is associated with high risk during pregnancy this can lead to even threatened abortion and this basically involves right to left shunt of the circulation that is the flow of blood from the right chamber of the heart to the left chambers of the heart okay so if the tetralogy of phthalate is not treated in the women in her early life that is before pregnancy there will be high risk of the fetus survival during the pregnancy okay so basically tetralogy of phthalate has to be treated in childhood otherwise there will be difficulty in survival of the women itself okay so tetralogy of phthalate if corrected prior to pregnancy there is low risk associated with pregnancy okay the fetus can acquire the congenital heart defects if it is genetic as you all know congenital defects are generally congenital that is they are acquired genetically 
in most of the cases okay so if either of the parents of a child has congenital defects congenital heart defects the fetus has more risk of acquiring the same defect so counseling has to be given to the parents regarding the congenital conditions and they should be told that the child has increased risk of getting the congenital defect which they have finally you gotta know that in developed countries what happens is that what's happening is that the incidence of rheumatic heart disease is decreasing in the recent days you know why this is because of increase in using of appropriate antibiotics against beta hemolytic streptococcus bacteria so using of appropriate antibiotics will prevent the incidence of rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease so rheumatic heart disease incidence is decreased also well improved cardiac surgeries are there to treat any congenital heart defects so they the rheumatic heart disease and congenital heart disease do not pose that much trouble in developed countries during pregnancy whereas in developing countries and in underdeveloped countries rheumatic heart disease is still common and congenital heart diseases cannot be treated adequately due to lack of proper surgical techniques and surgical lack of access to surgical care even though rheumatic heart disease is more common than congenital heart disease both are almost in the similar ratio and both of them pose similar threat to the pregnancy in developing countries and in underdeveloped countries so that's it for today be ahead of everyone else and watch our videos first exclusively on our patreon page by visiting patreon.com slash medwits made simple you can gain access to this link by clicking on the description below thanks for watching please subscribe to our youtube channel medwits made simple and help us make more videos by donating on patreon and follow us on facebook twitter instagram and google plus and share this video to your friends thank you